so it, it is not right to say, oh, if you have a more clever minister, mm. you can get more things done. Not necessary. But it helps if the minister knows the subject matter. Of course. Uh, What's so difficult about being transparent? Yeah. That, you yeah. know, it, it, it is okay to say, oh, this tender is open. Mm. Yeah, but what is open tender? Yeah. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Zayed Ibrahim Podcast. My name is Zayed Ibrahim and this is Rosli Azad Khan. Today we'll be talking about two subjects, cabinet reshuffle and the new king. If you like, press follow, press like, press share, press subscribe. So today, let me suggest uh, dog yeah uh, you see dog and I we, we were in school together of course I was much more senior mm -hmm. as you can tell from our appearance yeah? uh, but we kind of came from this kind of similar background almost almost uh, we, we're from the Islamic states of Klantan and it's from Islamic state of Tranganu <laughs> and we both appreciate the value of English language you know when we were in school we read a lot of English books, which I think in some ways help us, at least in terms of communication skills. Yeah, yeah, that's right. It didn't that's make right. us rich because we were not focused on that. Yeah. We were more focused on how to make the Malays think better, how the Malays should be stronger economically. We were thinking about all those issues. Uh, well, I write a lot of articles, Rosli, also, is a prolific writer. I think it's uh, for viewers who don't do not know me. Uh, let me just introduce myself a little bit. Right. Um, my name is Rosli Khan. Uh, I'm uh, basically a traffic and transportation consultant for over 30 years, um, having worked in so many countries in Southeast Asia, Middle East, uh, Africa, uh, and so on. Um, if you ask me what would be my biggest uh, personal achievement, uh, I would say that uh, getting PhD at the age of 32 was, um, was my biggest achievement uh, way back in the 90, um, from Cranfield University in England. And ever since, um, you know, because my subject matter uh, expert has been in transportation, so I've been practicing that. Um, as a consultant for the last 30 years. So that's a bit of my background. I come from Trunganu, like Datuk Zaid said. Um, born in Trunganu, uh, but grew up in Ipoh with Datuk Zaid and, and, and then Kuala Lumpur. Yeah. Okay. That's a bit of background. Very good. I, 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 I don't know. I want to talk about my background. I never got a PhD. A very <laughs> mediocre student. Uh, average student. Uh, I... I was a lawyer at one time. I was a, uh, I write books. I write articles. I own a football club also. I mm. once owned Clanton Football Club. Right, right. Uh, during the days when we were privatizing football. Yeah. And I I do charity work. I still have my wife particularly do a lot of charity work in Clanton for the last twenty five years. That's that's another subject yeah. matter that we need to talk about. I think sports. Oh, sports, sports. Yeah, 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 sports. Yeah. Uh, anyway, this podcast is also a celebration to remember Socrates. Socrates gave his life for freedom. The judges told Socrates, you have a chance to repent. You have a chance to say you don't say, you don't mean all those things you told the youth of Athens. Socrates told the Athenian youth, you have to examine your life. That an unexamined life is not worth living, he told them. So the judges sentenced him to death. He had to drink hemlock, the poison. But they gave him a chance to save his life. But Socrates said no. He gave his life to protect freedom of speech, of thought. 
And that's what he left us with. So I urge all Malaysians to follow my broadcast, to follow our broadcast, to follow the subject that we're going to talk about. By the way, we're not going to talk politics. Eh? There's too much politics in this country. Yeah? We're going to talk about issues of the people. Huh? If we have to talk about potholes, we talk about potholes. Huh? If we're going to talk about why the police have so many roadblocks, we will talk about roadblocks. We talk about price of eggs, whatever. The yardstick we measure is what is good for the people of this country. So that's what we're going to talk about. And I think I would want to ask my colleague, Mr. Rosalie, to also say a few words about what he thinks this podcast is all about. Doc. Yeah, thank you, Dato' Zai. Well, in the world of saturated and social media, with social media and mass media, where spin, spin fake news, propaganda, cloud our understanding, we would like this to be a beacon of clarity. We believe there's a need for informative content that cuts through the noise and addresses the real issues affecting our nation. Um, so this this could be a good start, you know, for listeners and viewers to look at your yes. podcast seriously, and maybe they, you know, they will get a different view, different opinion, you know, yes. that will uh, make yes. a difference to the, to their life. Yeah, yeah, so I think so. You said the right thing. Uh, we hope that whatever we say, whatever views express, will make a difference. Although. Some of my friends, they told me that we small people, whatever we say, don't matter. Nothing's going to change. Well, I don't agree. I think the smallest atoms make up the universe. The smallest voice of the people will one day make a difference. We must have faith in the truth. We must have faith in what is right. And if we think this country is sliding backwards, downwards, sideways, we have to accept our opinion, our view. It will make a difference, I think. So today, I want to suggest that we talk first about the cabinet reshuffle. How about that? <laughs> yeah, That's, the cabinet uh, reshuffle, huh? because everybody talks about it. Huh? Yeah. Um, so I want you to start. Uh, what do you think about okay. the cabinet reshuffle and why and what are the feedbacks, whatever you want to say? Okay. Can, can I start the ball rolling uh, by um, taking a leaf from your quote, Tato? Um, you said that justice is a long road. Um, and I think justice has been a long road for Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim. And when he became Prime Minister, uh, I think the nation celebrated, um, you know, for what he has achieved, waiting for, he waited for over 25 years. But you have been a minister in the cabinet. I think um, life at the top can be quite lonely at times, right? What more if you are surrounded by people, uh, your officers who are not that competent uh, to execute what you have in mind. So um, he probably assembled a team at that time, what he thought was the best team, you know, uh, given the uh, a myriad of parties in his unity government. Uh, so he put together a team, but obviously uh, it, it functioned, did not function that well in the first year. So I think that was the reason why he um, did a cabinet reshuffle um, last week or a few days ago, rather. So, so I think um, the new members, um, well, it's too early to tell, but maybe you can give your views on that? Mm. On that yeah, I, I'm okay with cabinet reshuffle, because I think the prime minister knows what needs to be done. Mm. Um, although I must also add here, yeah, much as I would like the Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim to succeed, I was in his party from, for some years too. Mm. And I want him to succeed. Yeah. But 
the failings of the cabinet or some members of the cabinet, if they are, if they are failing, mm. it is a collective thing, you know. Collective, yeah. In, in the sense that collective decisions decision. made is the decisions of the government. So sometimes, what I want to say here is that I don't feel comfortable when people say so and so, this minister not working, not functioning, mm. not doing well, because sometimes we don't know the constraint. But. But, okay, when you were minister in the cabinet of Abdullah Badawi, uh, did you think at that time that the role of ministers is critical to the running of the ministry? Yes, uh, but you must remember, the decision made by the minister is not by himself. Okay. Whatever he proposed has to be agreed by the cabinet. So it is not right to say, oh, if you have a more clever minister, mm. you can get more things done. Not necessary. But it helps if the minister knows the subject matter. Of course. Uh, of course. If you, if you yeah. are, I mean, you, 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 you were a lawyer. That's why you were yeah, burdened uh, with of the course. ministry. Uh, but, of but, but what I want to say about this reshuffle is this, like, you know, uh, the least we can hope from the government is that, mm. you know, at least we know why certain ministers are dropped. Mm. Certain minutes appointed. Right. I mean, there must be some discussion in the media. Right. The riot must know the what is ex behind. what is expected yeah. of yeah. that minister. Yeah. 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 Ministry. Yeah. I mean, for example, I I just want to take one example here. Yeah. You know, when I read about the minister of health, what's her name, Zaleha? Yeah. When yeah. she was dropped, yeah. I was quite surprised actually. Right. I don't know her, but I thought she did quite well. Based on the newspaper thing, you mm, know, report, report. Newspaper report. You know, when she took over, there was a huge outcry about, you know, doctors who are not on permanent mm. appointments. Temporary uh, those, doctors, yeah. The temporary doctors. Yeah. Thousands of them were on strike. Yeah. And within a six months, she was able to take in, I think, about 15,000 of them on permanent basis. Mm -hmm. So I thought that was an achievement. Right. And then she did something on what we call the Madani, uh, uh, Madani uh, scheme to help B40 group to get better medical treatment. Mm. And she did that. She did that. So when she was dropped, I, the least I would expect is some discussion as to why. Because, you see, some people are more flamboyant than others. Mm. But flamboyant ministers doesn't mean they're doing the work. Right. They may speak well. But they may talk a lot, you know. So I would prefer that ministers meet the press often, mm. talk to the public often about what they're doing, mm. what they're not doing, why are they having some difficulties here and there, right. so that we are properly appraised. But anyway, I, I, I'm okay with the reshuffle. I mean, past said that the reshuffle is to strengthen the position of the prime minister. But right. I said, that's okay if we strengthen him, but it yeah. must also strengthen the government. Yeah. Yeah. Strengthening the prime minister, not the government, doesn't serve the, people, the riots, you know? <laughs> so I am okay with the reshuffle, but I would like, as I said, uh, why? But, uh, and, and for example, why was it that the federal ministry, the portfolio, the, the minister of the ministry of uh, Wilaya was, was dropped 12 months mm -hmm. ago? Mm -hmm. What was the reason? We don't know. Right. And now we are get back to that. Yeah. Now we have a minister. So for every big decision the government make, I think the riot needs to but, know. Okay. Why? Uh, I mean, looking from the prime minister's angle, uh, don't you think that it is quite difficult to assemble a team that consists of different parties? So you have to satisfy the wishes of many parties. Uh, not only that, and then there are also uh, regional considerations that you have to give, state considerations. Like now, for instance, if you look at the members of the cabinet, there's none from Kelantan, there's none from Terengganu, right? The two states that we represent. <laughs> so <laughs> is that fair? That's not fair. That's not fair, right? And there is yeah. no, and there's no Tamil minister. <laughs> right. And the majority of India <laughs> yeah, is in this you country. Have got this, uh, Tamil. Ethnic. Background that background. you have to yeah, consider, yeah. 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 Of course, yeah. of course. I mean, the, there are so many things to consider. Yeah. But at the end of the day, you have to make a decision that is at least defensible. 
Yeah, right. You know, right. that's why I agree with you. Yeah, the, the prime minister has to take into account. But I'm disappointed. No minister from Kelantan and, and Terengganu. Terengganu. Yeah, you're honest with yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, and Kedah. I was hoping the Prime Minister would make Sanusi well, the, the minister. Speaker, speaker is from Kedah. So. Oh, speaker is... Uh, yeah. Speaker is cosmetic role, I mean, right. Excuse me. Right. <laughs> but, but I would expect, I hope, like, Samsuri, ke, Sanusi, ke, yeah, yeah. Pon, some ministers from Kelantan, you know? Yeah, not me, are, but somebody but from But they past. are from different party. So they are not part of the unity government. No, so make the unity government bigger. Ah. I mean, if you have 60, what's the problem with 80? Right. No, so, you already have 60 plus now. But if you want to serve the country, if you think that it's in the interest of the country... Invite them. Invite them. Okay. Invite, pass in. And if you say pass is extremist, please, when they are in opposition, they're all extremists. Right. So when they come to power, wow, they become reasonable. <laughs> but this is, uh, you know, DAP was once called extremist Chinese. And today, right. everybody kissed the AP. Oh, right. What have they changed? Nothing. You know, so I, I think PAS is not an extremist party. I live with PAS for the last 33 years. You know, mm. and I don't think the Chinese in Kelantan are not happy. But they, they talk about concert and slow up and day and uh, mm. perempuan pakai manju mm. ketat. That's mm. about it, la, you know. Mm. It's harmless, you know. But if you bring them to government, I'm sure they will be, uh, they will help the prime minister. I mean, that's why I've been advocating. Okay, but on a serious note, uh, do you think that hey, the this members is serious, of, my friend? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, serious. <laughs> but the members of the unity government, the other parties in the unity government, would welcome pass into the government. You think? Uh, well, well, I think they will make a lot of noise, but they all want power. Do you think they will drop off? Do you think they will say? Mr. Anwar, if you take pass, I'll get out. No, they won't. They ah. represent the Malay section of the nation. Yeah. They, which is now represented by Amno. Yeah, but Amno is quite sickly now, you know. I mean, <laughs> I mean if you want to get Malay representative, get a real representative. Right? A real, real yeah. Malay representative. But yeah. well, coming back to this ah. threats of other, like the AP, yeah, uh, yeah. You know, uh, I'm sure the AP will make any noises, la, but they, was, they got digital minister, la, transport, yeah. La, yeah. Fine, I mean, they got a lot of juicy stuff. Yeah. You think they will resign? No, they uh, won't. Okay. And so I think uh, the prime minister has some liberties. The prime minister can, can, uh, uh, can make some solid offer, serious offer, mm. to unite the people and to build up the economy. Right, that's yeah. the important part, yeah. right? Yeah, the building of the economy. Yes, you continue. Yeah. You, you, yeah, yeah, you yeah, seems yeah. to have a lot of ideas on cabinet reshuffle. Uh, well, not as much as you do, Dato. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I'm, have always been on the fringe of politics, but at times when I got involved in some of the transportation projects, uh, you, you have got no choice but to understand the workings of politicians and how politics dictate certain projects yes. in the country and so on. Yeah. So this is where, um, this is the, you know, the, the sort of background that provided me with knowledge of understanding how the politicians work and how the political system dictate certain projects that are being planned for the country. And, you know, I, I spent two years in the last Pakatan Harapan government, 2018 to 2020, and I saw um, that um, the, the campaign that, that, that was ran before uh, 2018, uh, there were manifestos and there were talk, there were campaign and so on. But by the time they actually became, formed the government, they more or less moved away from the manifesto. Yeah. So uh, I was a bit disappointed in the sense that, in that sense, because I, I was new uh, together with them. And uh, they were basically disregarded whatever that they promised. Yeah. Yeah. to the voters and so on, yeah. and they move away from uh, into something else. Yes. Right? Yeah. But that's, that's the problem in our country today, you know, that when you get to power, you somehow conveniently forget. Yeah. You mudah lupa. 
Ah. <laughs> <laughs> when you were fighting for the, you say oh the people need this the people need that the yeah. people need this the people need that yeah. And but when you come to power you say oh that's difficult mm. uh, the government might fall <laughs> okay so yeah. so I think okay I think we have covered a bit about uh, uh, about um, uh, about uh, cabinet reshuffle, reshuffle. Cabinet reshuffle yeah. and I, I, if you like what we're saying mm. if you like this program you must share you must press like or you must subscribe or you must do whatever you need to do lah, mm. so that we we, 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 we we can carry on we will be encouraged by your support and kalau you banyak sokong kita pun semangat and then we will be able to tell you more about other issues Welcome back to Zaid Ibrahim Podcast This morning we're going to talk about the new king, the new Yan Dipertuan Ago, Sultan Ibrahim from Johor. I believe he will ascend the throne in two months' time. Two months' time. And uh, he has given an extensive wide interview on a wide-ranging subject uh, to the Singapore Straits Times about his thoughts his role, what government should do, and so on and so forth. This is a very interesting development because this is the first time we have a monarch, a constitutional monarch, outlining his thoughts in public. And I think it's a good thing. I think the country will be better served if we have a hands-on king who knows what's happening and who can offer his thoughts to the Prime Minister. Because they, have, they need to work together, of course. You see, even in England, you know, and it is common for the King or the Queen Elizabeth, when he was, she was alive, to call the Prime Minister and ask about things that happen in the country. Of course, it's not reported in the newspapers, but conversations of this nature took place between the monarch and the Prime Minister. And this is active conversations on the affairs of the country are necessary. So I expect that uh, the new king, Sultan Ibrahim, will lay out a new path on governance in this country. You read the interview with Dr. Rosli, what, yes. what do you think of his statements? Yes, very interesting. I, I read the full uh, text of the interview, both in uh, Singapore mm -hmm. and uh, also the one in Malaysia. Um, the one in Malaysia seems to be a bit truncated. Uh, the Singapore one uh, published uh, the entire length of the interview. Um, and some of the things that he said, uh, I think uh, it makes a lot of sense. Um, and you know, he's, um, he's, he's very observant in terms of uh, the nation, national politics and he's aware of the issues that have been going on in the last um, few years in the country. And, uh, and I think he spoke well on, on, the, on those issues. But before I go on and ask you um, for your opinion, um, I'd like to bring this... Uh, subject into the conversation. You see, when, when PMX Anwar Ibrahim uh, came into the picture one year ago, became the Prime Minister, he campaigned on the basis of reforms. Um, everywhere he goes, uh, he talked about, you know, reforms agenda uh, for the country. And uh, one year later, um, we have not seen any reforms, right? So uh, he, he likes to quote Shakespeare, um, who, comes, who also comes from England. And uh, Shakespeare's famous tagline, to be or not to be. Now, with PMX, can we say that to reform or not to reform? Which until today we have not seen any. So I'm looking at it from the angle that what? Tuanku Sultan Johor is saying is basically 
some part of this reform. You know, MACC, they have been talking about reporting to parliament for many years, but it didn't happen. Petronas has been reporting to prime minister, solely to prime minister, and we never seen Petronas account all these years. So when Tuanku Sultan Johor came up with this idea that MACC and Petronas need to be reformed, I think it's related to what PMS has been promising to the people of this country. What do you think? Yes, yes, yes. I, as I say, I'm excited, you know. Mm. Uh, the new king is smart, man, I think. He's a learner, uh, man. Yeah, I only met him once or twice, you know. But I think his son speaks well. He's good looking. It's nice to have a good looking king. Obviously, yeah. You know? yeah. Not like King Charles. I mean, sorry. <laughs> king Charles is <laughs> not bad too, but... Uh, <laughs> uh, But uh, I, I think that what he said, two things that that uh, strike me as mm. important, you know. Mm. One, he said something about, okay, you have 222 MPs mm. in parliament. Right. But I have the whole 30 million people to worry about. Yes. That's And that's significant yeah. because what he's saying is there's, a, there's only so much politics can do for you. Yes, yes. You know, you can be smart at politicking. You can be smart at power power game. Mm. You can take care of this group and this group and then back to this group. Mm. But what he wants to see from what his brief statement is like, the welfare of the people is more important. More important, yes. And yeah. then politicking. And I think he's right because mm. we have too much politicking, too much yeah. Yeah. Uh, shouting, mass, so much. And there's no meaningful... Uh, relate, uh, the issues are not related to the people, really, yeah. and and uh, and I think this is this is one thing that I think will hope. Yeah, with his uh, becoming king, then we can have some some uh, change. Okay, and uh, like like you said, you know, to be or not to be. <laughs> I don't read Shakespeare. My English is not that level, but. But, yes, you have to decide what you want to be. I mean, a lot of people say the Prime Minister, PMX 10, cannot rush into reform because he hasn't got the support. No, he has But got then he has majority the support. In the, the next day, we heard that he's got a majority of two-thirds. Yes, plus some, some supporters from the other side. Yeah, so the the, yeah. it's not the support that's the problem, I think. No. It um, is whether he wants to be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so I hope with the encouragement of the new king, new the king, prime yeah. minister will become a little bit smart, uh, brave, more, yeah, uh, more vocal, more bold. Uh, so uh, the prime minister the, can lean on the monarch. Yeah, yeah. Lean in a in a healthy sense yeah, of yeah. get the support from him yeah. to reform our institutions. You know. Yeah. I mean. We are not making any progress Lee, in in a very fundamental way. For example, transparency. Yeah, you know what's so difficult about being transparent? Yeah, that, you yeah. know it, it, it is okay to say, oh, this tender is open. Mm. Yeah, but what is open tender? Yeah, yeah. And then then you then say, oh, this is urgent. Yeah, we cannot give open tender for this aero train missile. Yeah, huh? yeah. Nine hundred million, we cannot give open tender because it's urgent. What is urgent? Mm. Why is it urgent? Mm. So a transparent government is what we need so that the people will know yeah. what's happening. Now, if you say after all these years of fighting for reform, you are not able to be transparent, I find it hard to believe. Yeah. Yeah. Because being transparent is like being transparent with your family mm. or mm. with your wife or whatever. Yeah. It's not yeah. difficult. No, unless you have done something uh, wrong. Yeah, I mean, uh, the, the basis the basis of the current government is uh, transparency and accountability. Yeah. So, um, so I think with um, with a king um, heading the nation, who is all for the purpose of transparency and accountability and making the life of the people much better, I think the 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 executive, as they call it, yeah, the cabinet ministers and so on, we have a fallback position that whatever that they do in support of the king's wishes, that we work for the country. Yeah. Um, although, you know, there is still this 
constitutional monarchy that, that, that governs um, our country. Uh, we are governed by the constitution, and then we have got a king. Uh, at the same time, um, are we moving towards absolute absolute monarch, monarchy? Oh no no no! no? I, I know this. Uh, this I, this is what the response so far yes. from the interview. You yes. know, yes. some commentators are saying, "Oh, are we going to become an absolute monarchy?" Yeah. Uh, no no, we are not. But yeah. you must remember, the definitions are not precise. Yeah, that, that's you know? what the critics are saying, yeah. which I don't agree either. Yeah, I don't no, agree with that. The, the, yeah. the Sultan, the Malay rulers, and the Yagong, in the constitution and in the state constitution, yeah. Yeah. there are areas where he has a discretion. Yeah. He has a discretion. So the discretion means he has a say. He has a say, yeah, yeah definitely, yeah. But all, we are, all I think the Tuanku is saying is that he has a say, he wants to exercise that say properly. Advisedly, you know, mm. he wants facts. Yeah, he wants uh, the 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 reason for certain decisions made, and I think that doesn't make him an absolute monarch. No. You know, I always say that this that uh, you can have what we want, the country want, what the people want. It's not label. Yeah, uh, constitutional monarch, absolute monarch. What we want is effective leadership. Effective leadership. Yeah, that's the word. So if you can give mm. effective leadership whether you can call whatever name you want, mm. that's what the people want. Yeah. You know, I remember you know, when, uh, when uh, we were talking about King Bumipol of Thailand, mm. uh, the third longest monarch in the world, in the history of the world. Mm. And when he took power in 1946, Thailand was in the middle of a strife, a fight between civilian and military. As you remember, in the 1930s, the military took over. Yeah. And then it was this tali tali between civilian and military until mm. today. Mm. And if not for Bumipol's influence and respect the people gave him, Thailand was able to grow mm. from a very poor country to a quite a thriving economy. Thriving economy, and yeah. And stable, you know. So the reign, the rule of, or rather the role of the monarch who is effective, who can bring the poor people together, mm. who can bring the politician together, yeah, yeah, yeah. is what we need. Yeah. So that doesn't make Bobby Paul absolute monarch. They just love him. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah, they yeah. just love him. And and what is important for Malay rulers as well, that yeah. they have to make the people love them. Yeah. Respect them. Yeah. Yeah. You know? And if the people love them and respect them, then you can call whatever name you want. Yeah. It does not matter. So the key thing is effective leadership. Yes, effective leadership. And there's yeah. a check and balance. Yes. Because you are worried about the king becoming absolute, but you are not worried about prime minister becoming absolute. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good one. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, yes. I mean, the prime minister today is absolute. Why I say it's absolute? Mm. Well, he can appoint anybody he wants as MACC chief. He can sack anybody. Mm. Of course, he just he has to go to Sidi Agong. Yeah, yeah. But that's just a perfunctory thing. Yeah, yeah. You know, he can sack the attorney general if he wants to. All right. You know, he can do whatever he wants. So that's absolute. So we need some check and balance. And this check and balance is between the monarch and the politician. Yeah. I mean, already the prime minister has a speaker with him. Yeah. So legislatively, he is already in control. In control. Yeah. Executive is the chief of the cabinet. He's yeah. in control. So perhaps the court is not that in control, but you never know what he can do. So I feel that there has to be a balance in this country between the politicians and the other rulers. Yeah. Yeah. to provide the people with effective leadership. So I'm not worried about whether he'll become an absolute monarch or not. I'm not worried. He mm. won't be because the constitution doesn't say that. Doesn't say that, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, okay, last point uh, on this issue of the new king. Mm. Uh, what is worrying some people really is the the fact that they say all the rulers, they do business. Okay. Huh? So what happens when the ruler do business? Will it affect the people? Uh, well, no, it doesn't if you have a transparent system. You know, for example, in Thailand, 
Bobby Paul is a very wealthy monarch, one of the wealthiest yeah. in the world. Mm. But who manages his assets, his investment, his project? Is what they call the Crown Bureau, made up of civilian mm. experts. He doesn't get involved. Mm. So these are the people who make decisions for investment. He makes decisions for this and that. Right. So we can have the same system. Yeah. If we are concerned about monarch doing business, yeah. there's a, there, there, there are other ways of dealing with the issue. Yeah. We, yeah. should, we should not be worried if the monarch is wealthy. Right. Because well, Queen Elizabeth is the wealthy. same thing. Yeah, crown crown agent is managing the the crown agent is managing money, yeah. the uh, the King Charles asset yeah, yeah, yeah. property. Yeah, and and in, even in Japan, mm. so all the government has to do is to be transparent by setting up this whatever yeah. and manages the assets of the monarch. Yeah. yeah, and so that the monarch is isolated, as it were, from mm. lobbying. Yeah. you know, and, and I think. And I think that's not an issue that we should worry about because there are solutions, yeah. you know? And so I, I feel that uh, we have what we need now, effective, effective, brave so, leaders. So basically the government has to go back to what they campaign yes. Uh, yes. on transparency and accountability. And transparency yeah. and accountability. And, and undertake all the reforms. Yes. And, 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 and if, if they can do that, oh, I think then we have a... Super Malaysia. Yo, I'm going to be a strong supporter of the Prime Minister again. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm still supporting him, but yeah. I, I, you know, I think I like to see good things for the country. You yeah, know? Yeah, so yeah. I can support anybody. No mm. problem, you know. And uh, I think we have, I think as much that we want to say about the new monarch. Mm. And uh, press like, press share, subscribe. press subscribe, press whatever you want to press, so long as our podcast becomes the number one podcast in the country. Terima kasih. Thank you. Thank you. Terima kasih.